Hi everyone, my name is Tia and by clicking on the video you already know what I was up to this weekend. I spent five dollars on this absolutely stuffed Oh God, like that's heavy a bag of books and of course I want to go through them with you just some quick disclaimers I feel so lucky that libraries around me do this kind of thing You can definitely google like book sales near me and hopefully something will pop up I donate most of these as well to little free libraries I will link the playlist of like my little free library videos and five freaking dollars. Ah, I'm so 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 thankful So let's just get started <laughs> This one intrigued me by the cover alone. I don't even think I looked at the blurb because I wanted to look at the blurb with you. Look at this green. Are you kidding me? Bam. It's like brat summer green. It's great. International film crew to the Amazon in the 1970s and explores the forces that underlie human violence and the faint borderline between art and life. What? <laughs> Thrilling journey and a thoughtful commentary on violence and its repercussions. I'm super interested in reading this one. Whoever designed this deserves all their flowers. Are you serious? Wow. The hundred year old man who climbed out of the window and disappeared by Jonas Johansson. Jo Jonasson. Jonasson. Uh, that took a lot of breath out of me. I already hauled this actually at a different library, but this is a cover I've never seen before and I honestly want this one. So I'm gonna donate that one because look at how cute this cover is. The little man and it's like embossed. So he kind of sticks out of the cover. I don't know. I really like it. I've heard many good things about this book. You're never too old for an adventure. Escaping in his slippers through his bedroom window into the flower bed, Alan makes his getaway. And then as his escapades unfold, we kind of learn about Alan's earlier life. So I feel like this is giving like the synopsis of like, a Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman, which is a book that I thoroughly enjoyed. <laughs> and look, he's in his little slippers. Are you kidding? I think the design is just great. Again, no organization. This is how I shove the books into the bag at the store, at the library sale. I actually have a vlog too, a weekend in my life where I go to the library, like this library sale. Um, so check that out. <laughs> and then this, I am so stoked about. Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan. Okay, one glorious find because this sticker, I can remove it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have been trying to find the Crazy Rich Asian series. I found the first one and then the second one I just found in my little library video and I was so jazzed because like oh, I already have the first one perfect and I saw this they didn't have the first one They didn't have the second one. They only had this one. So I knew it was like meant for me, you know <laughs> I just knew I'm so excited about this. I read the audiobook of the first one I need to reread it I feel like I think it'll be really helpful seeing it and then me and like this little book club that me and my friends have We are reading the new Kevin Kwan book like love and lies and what or something that's our book club pick for August so I'm just excited to get back into like the rich people romp the fictional rich people romp shenanigans that Kevin Kwan writes about and now I have the whole series go me I also realize this I know this is a huge cup of coffee like look it's basically as big as my head and I notoriously have a larger head but I like messed up the coffee that I made because I didn't put it in the right cup so this is honestly it tastes like chocolate milk which I don't love and it's mostly ice so like if you're worried about my caffeine consumption as am I, but this is not the worry. I don't know how I messed up that bad, but it's not good. And then I picked this up because just like by the cover alone, I one of my favorite genres is like YA mysteries. And I feel like this is just scratching an itch. Vampire in Love and Other Stories by Enrique Villa Matas. M Mata. Something about this cover is just so good. This is translated by Margaret Jewel Costa. It offers a selection of the Spanish master Enrique's finest short stories, an effeminate, whoa, effeminate hunchbacked barber on the verge of death falls in love with a choir boy. I cannot speak today. A fledging writer on barbiturates? Why do I feel illiterate today? Oh, it's a depressant drug. Barbiturates. Visits a Paris apartment and watches his dinner companion slip into the abyss are all told with landmark erudition. Are you serious? Erudition. Erudition. Oh, okay, I said it right. <laughs> Not to brag or anything, said it right the first time. Erudition, wait, what does it mean? Quality of having or showing great knowledge or learning, scholarship. Wit and provocative questioning of the inner relation of art and life. Oh, art and life, very much um, similar to the first book. I just think this will be a very interesting read. I've never heard of it before and I'm very, very, very intrigued. I obviously drink way too much coffee today. The Road by Cormac McCarthy is a book that I've seen like on a few of my favorite booktubers videos. Anna Wallace Johnson, Sean McComb, they have been really intriguing me from this. I've heard just like it, it's an absolutely devastating book and that's really all I know about it. Searing post-apocalyptic novel destined to become Cormac's masterpiece. Father and his son walk alone through burned America. Nothing moves in this ravaged landscape save the ash on the wind. It is cold enough to crack stones and when the snow falls it is gray. Ooh. 
It boldly imagines a future in which no hope remains, but in which the father and his son, each the other's world entire, are sustained by love. <laughs> are you serious? I'm absolutely gonna blast through this book. I just know it. One, it's great because the margins so large and the line spacing very generous the only downside is like when i came home and looked at it it's like falling apart which is really sad like this is coming out of the book so i'm gonna maybe glue this question mark but i don't know surely that's not correct like that's not a correct way to fix the book but i'm excited to read this the other black girl is like a brand new copy. This is a book that I've seen at like Target and some thrift stores. First of all, beautiful cover, fantastic. The blue is very shiny. This is by Zakia Dahlia Harris. 26 year old editorial assistant Nella is tired of being the only black employee at Wagner Books. Fed up with the isolation and microaggressions, she's thrilled when Harlem born and bred Hazel starts working in the cubicle besides hers. They've only just begun comparing natural hair care regimens though, when a string of uncomfortable events elevates Hazel to office darling and Nella is left in the dust. Ooh. As Nella starts to spiral and obsess over the sinister forces at play, she soon realizes there's a lot more at stake than her career. Ooh, is Nella ready to take on the fight of a new generation? I don't know why. I really love like workplace drama. As odd as that sounds, I really enjoy reading about books that have interpersonal conflict in a workplace. Like I find that that is a very uncomfortable but intriguing dynamic. What a weirdo cover. I'm obsessed. <laughs> the Disaster Tourist by Yun Cohen. The, the elephant. What? The umbrella is so mushroom, right? I love it. And this is translated by Lizzie Bueller. When catastrophe strikes, who can resist looking at the wreckage? Ooh, Yona is nearing burnout working for Jungle, a sinister soul-based company that specializes in tours to ecological disaster zones. Ooh, when one of Yona's bosses sexually harasses her, the company tries to bribe her with a free tour to Mew, an island off the coast of Vietnam known for its giant sinkhole. But she becomes trapped on the island and stumbles upon a discovery that puts her in grave danger. Oh, this is a blackly comic caper with real satirical bite. Hmm. It revels in the absurdity of modern life. <laughs> Literary fiction, it's very, very tiny, and it definitely is an eye catcher. Oh, I'm so excited to read this. And when I say like I'm excited to read it, I don't necessarily think I'll be keeping it on my shelves and like waiting for me to get to it. I think if anything, I will borrow these from the library and give them away. Speaking of giving away, I'm definitely gonna be giving this away, but I just thought All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I've heard really good things about this YA. I've heard very sad things about this. I own a hardback cover already. So I just thought someone might enjoy it in a little free library. I just know this is a very popular YA book. Oh, and this one didn't even look at what it is about, but I just wanted to show you this cover. Happenstance, two novels and one about a marriage in transition. I think this is going to be such an interesting read. So I, I was like, oh, cool. Look at the cover. And then you flip it. Stop. Ah, happenstance, two novels and one about a marriage in transition. So uh, I'm assuming it's like from both the woman and the man's perspective in the marriage. <gasps> okay. So, okay. First, no margins. Don't love that. <laughs> Oh, it's so tiny so it's upright here and then you go beep, 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 beep. and then look it's upside down it's so fun i wonder which side oh look new bookmark alert this hair salon tony luco hair incorporated in palo alto friday april 19th at 12 someone had an appointment i hope it went well <laughs> both sides start in chapter one so i wonder if the story will change depending on which side you read first. Oh, this is so fun. Honestly, they don't even give you any information about the book because you can't have blurbs. For Anne, the dedication is only on the husband side, but the husband side has the barcode. So this is technically the front. Ugh. What a joy, what a gem of a find. That's what I love about library sales and like thrifting books. You truly never know what you're gonna find. And this is just something I've never heard about. These finds just hit different versus a Barnes and Noble. Uh, I found this at a San Francisco library and I just thought, wow, I want to get it for someone else and it's in hardcover. I hope someone who finds it in a free little library will enjoy it. The only downside is that the cover is a little ripped so someone so kindly taped it before they gave it to the, the library. So that kind of stinks, but I'm not really picky with that kind of stuff. So hopefully someone else who finds this won't be either. But I have heard really good things about it. And then people on my San Francisco travel vlog where I like found this book 
said that they very much liked it. Um, it seems like a very melancholic book. The main character is quite lonely because she lives in a totally different country than she's from and she's like a little bit uncomfortable in her like social life. A lot of the comments gave it high praise so I'm very excited for me and whoever finds this to read it. Catronia Lally Eggshells, a novel. I don't know about this cover. I think maybe it's the green and the yellow uh, or it's a fish. Really like it. A quirky, touching debut about loneliness, friendship, and hope. And if you've watched my channel, that, is that not so up my alley? <laughs> That's the only thing I read about this book and I was like, bloop, into the bag. Vivian doesn't feel like she fits in and never has. As a child, she was so whimsical that her parents told her she'd been left by fairies. Oh, that's so messed up. Living alone in Dublin, neighbors treat her like she's crazy. <laughs> She advertises in the newspaper for a friend. She wants one named Penelope. Hmm. And then one day someone named Penelope answers the newspaper advertisement. Inventive wordplay in a book that is in itself utterly charming, thoroughly hilarious, and deeply moving. <laughs> That's so sad. Lisa Jewell is someone who I'm scared of. <laughs> I've mentioned her, I think a few times on my channel before. I've read Then She Was Gone. And if you have read that one, it's a good thriller, but it is genuinely, it grossed me out to think about it. It was terrifying. It's about like a 15 year old, she goes missing and you're in the mom's POV. You don't really know what happened to her, but like as someone who wants to be a mom one day and also was a 15 year old girl, that literally was my worst nightmare. So I, <laughs> I was like, why am I reading about this? Granted, I finished it uh, and the writing was very good and it kept me on my toes but like at what cost so I just saw it. the third wife I love this cover and it makes me want to pick up one of her books but again um just too much of a scaredy cat Adrian Wolf is an admired architect known for his charm his effortless good looks his enviable relationships with his two ex-wives and his five children married for the third time to Maya he has forever been the glue holding everyone together but now he's a grief-stricken widower alone in Maya's apartment except for her cat and his memories. Then Adrian finds an email. So begins his search to discover what really happened to his young wife. Ooh. It appears that someone close to home might have pushed Maya over the edge. <laughs> Gripping story about a man seeking the truth behind the facade in the broken pieces left behind. See, domestic thriller, terrifying. But no doubt about it, her writing is really good. <laughs> oh, and then an easy pick. Panchinko, which I know I haven't picked up yet. No one has said one bad thing about it. It's just very, very big. In the early 1900s, teenage Sunja, the adored daughter of a crippled fisherman, falls for a wealthy stranger at the seashore near her home in Korea. It is a story of love, sacrifice, ambition, and loyalty. I know I'll probably very much enjoy this, but I just know I'll need to be in the mood to pick this honker of a book up. Are you impressed that I stuck all this and I still have about half the bag left? I did a good job. <laughs> oh, isn't that crazy that I found this <laughs> at a library? Ooh, but I literally brought a Ziploc zip bag, a Ziploc, because of this. I, there's mold at the bottom, which is honestly really disgusting. Or it, it's not mold, or it might be mold. I, that doesn't look like dirt. That looks more serious than dirt. I don't like the idea of me breathing that in. So I literally brought a Ziploc bag and I'm going to store this in. But it's a Sophie Lark Brutal Prince. And I think this is like the independently published version, um, which I thought was really stinking cool. It's not like you see dark romances at library sales. And this is a book that I've heard of. I know that the wife and the husband to be are in an arranged marriage and he's allergic to strawberries. So before she tries to kiss him at the altar, she like eats a bunch of strawberries to try and kill him or something. Callum is the heir to the Irish mafia. Ruthless, arrogant, he wants to kill her. I could never love a brutal prince. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard a lot of good things from uh, Larry Reads, also one of my favorite booktubers. I just feel like my book taste doesn't really align with this kind of book. However, actually bonkers that I found this, but unfortunately we'll have to go in the Ziploc bag. And I felt, should I even donate this? I do feel kind of bad because like I'm giving someone an icky book, but at the same time, it's an independently published Sophie Lark. So I feel like someone who knows about her will be jazzed about finding this. In Five Years by Rebecca Surley is also a book that I see at a lot of library sales and I just pick it up because it is like a pretty, I'd say like popular contemporary romance. It's a good little free library donation. I, I think it's something about alternate realities. Danny is very much like she lives her life by the book. She's like trying to plan exactly everything the way that she wants it to be. And then one day she wakes up and she's in a different apartment, completely different ring on her finger. And she's next to a very different man than her fiance that she's used to. So it is an unforgettable love story, but it is not the one 
one you're expecting. I ended up DNFing this and then I looked at spoilers and safe to say I'm glad that I DNFed it, but again, like that's just my reading taste. So hopefully someone will like it. And then it also has like gold foiling, which I love, so cute. Very rando classic, but 1984 by George Orwell. Look how cute this cover is. I've never read it. Um, I guess cute is not the right word. It is kind of creepy, but in a fun, interesting way. This is the Signet Classics edition. I don't think I'm planning on reading this myself, but I just thought it is such a beautiful edition. Very cool. Saint X by Alexis Shaitkin, and it's an arc. This came out in February of 2020. Is this a bookmark? Oh no, it's just a piece of grass. Oh, and now that piece of grass is on my floor. Cool. It is a haunting portrait of grief, obsession, and the bond between two sisters never truly given the chance to know one another. Oh, that's very sad. Claire's only seven years old when her college-age sister Allison disappears on the last night of their family vacation at the resort on the Caribbean island of St. X. Several days later, Allison's body is found in a remote spot on the nearby quay and two local men are arrested. Ugh. Okay, time skip years later. Deeply moving story that culminates in an emotionally powerful ending. Scary. I think I'm too weenie to pick this up, but I do like how colorful the cover is. Jillian Flynn's Dark Places. Jillian Flynn is so popular. I also have sharp objects I bought at a used bookstore um, that I haven't gone to yet, but I, I feel like these are very winter books. So I just thought, meh. I liked Gone Girl the movie, have not read the book. Libby Day was seven when her mother and two sisters were murdered in the Satan sacrifice of Kineiki. Kansas. She survived and famously testified that her 15-year-old brother Ben was the killer. 25 years later, the Kill Club, secret society obsessed with notorious crimes, locates Libby and pumps her for details. Oh my god, leave Libby alone! Unimaginable truth emerges and Libby finds herself right back where she started, on the run from a killer. <laughs> ah, spooky! But that does sound really good. Water for Elephants, a very famous book. Just thought I would pick it up. I don't think I have a copy of this for myself. Oh, oh, there's a little note. April 2008 for Mrs. McCannon. Thank you for all that you do. Love, Sarah and family. <laughs> that is so cute. Wait, that's so cool. This book was gifted to someone in 2008. That was like 16 years ago. Oh my gosh. Uh, whoever um, Miss McCannon is or whatever, she is so good at keeping her books in good condition. This book is 16 years old. I would never be able to guess that. It does not have a blurb, so I don't know what it's about. <laughs> but I've heard of this book before. The Dinner by Herman coach again the reason why i picked this up is it's giving very ya mystery cover <laughs> and those always get me like the font the burnt page like something about it it's very very ya summer evening in amsterdam two couples meet at a fashionable restaurant for dinner but behind the empty words terrible things need to be said and with every four smile and every new course the knives are being sharpened each couple has a 15 year old son the two boys are united by their accountability for a single horrific act an act that has triggered a police investigation and shatter the comfortable, insulated world of these families. Ugh. Each couple shows just how far they're prepared to go to protect those they love. This is a big stack. Okay, oh my gosh. I think by far the most like exciting find because I've never seen this at a library sale before, but Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Kawaguchi. First, I didn't know that in person because I've only ever seen this like on Goodreads or online, but it has like little beautiful foiling like at the top. It's so pretty. I know that people really, really enjoy this book. Oh, okay, bonus, it has French flaps. Are you listening? Kazu continued. When you return to the past, you must drink the entire cup before the coffee gets cold. Uh, I don't actually like coffee that much. Kazu opened his eyes wider and brought her face an inch or so from the tip of Fumiko's nose. This is the one rule you have to absolutely obey, she said in a low voice. <laughs> I think this is such a famous popular book. Um, it is so cool that I found at a library. Last three books, this time next year, how many chances to meet your perfect match? This is also a book I ended up DNFing, but I thought someone might enjoy at a little free library. Minnie runs into Quinn at a New Year's party unexpectedly on their mutual third 
30th. Oh my God, I thought this said 13th. I was like, I do not remember this book being YA. <laughs> Fortune has continued to favor him. The gorgeous, charming business owner truly seems to have it all, while Minnie's on the brink of losing her pie-making company and her home. But if Quinn and Minnie are from different worlds, why do they keep bumping into each other? And why is it that each fraught encounter leaves them both wanting more? <laughs> I tried to read this in like 2021. I just couldn't get into it, but it does sound very adorable. Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Oh my God, it is such a harrowing, sad beautiful story about family and love and life Lydia is dead but they don't know this yet so begins this exquisite novel about a Chinese American family living in the 1970s small town Ohio sensitive family portrait uncovering the ways in which mothers and daughters fathers and sons and husbands and wives struggle all their lives to understand one another I remember this ending being absolutely so sad but i really enjoyed celeste ing's writing i hope someone can enjoy this okay the last book we're ending off with a bang um lucy score the paris apartment i believe this is quite like a popular book um i read the guest list unfortunately this is not removable boo we don't like that and the guest list truly wasted like eight hours of my life because i was reading it through maybe i don't know that much of the book and i was like oh wait i have a question let me ask miss google and I guess the way that I formatted the question, it absolutely spoiled the entire book for me. And the shock factor was like no longer there. So I just decided to DNF it. It wasn't that great of a book personally for me. Like it really dragged on, but who knows? Maybe the Paris apartment is better. Meet the residents of number 12, a beautiful old apartment building in the city of light. The socialite, nice guy, alcoholic, girl on the verge, the concierge. Everyone's a neighbor, everyone is a suspect and everyone knows something they are not telling. Ooh, what a good blurb. So I think someone will get a kick out of finding this and a little free library i thought that was super cool okay let's do our calculations this is the fun part 11 15 24 24 books and this is very ugh, ah, ah. five bucks 24 books that ends up being 21 cents a book dub dub yeah we love libraries we absolutely love libraries isn't that insane 20 cents you literally cannot find a better steal for a book like ever you feel like you're robbing the library but actually if anything you're you're helping them it's amazing it's best of both worlds really you cannot do better than that so i would highly encourage you of course to always use your local library utilize the resources try and find book sales near you if applicable let me know like the most exciting find i feel like i've never found this good of like a contemporary selection. I feel like I got some like really standout picks this time. Please don't forget to check out that weekend in my life vlog so you can see like my experience actually shopping at this library sale. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.